the key. Now you may not even yet know I am, or believe that I am really you, or that I am likewise your brother and your sister, and that you are all parts of me and one with me. You may not realize that the souls of you and your brother and sister, the only real and imperishable parts of the mortal you, are but different phases of me in expression in what is called nature. Likewise, you may not realize that you and your brothers and sisters are phases or attributes of my divine nature, just as your human personality with its mortal body, mind and intellect is a phase of your human nature. No, you do not realize this yet, but I speak of it now that you may know the signs when they begin to appear in your consciousness, as they surely will. In order to recognize these signs, all that now follows must be considered carefully and studied and should not be passed by until my meaning, at least in some degree, is grasped. Once you fully understand the principle I here set down, then all my message will become clear and comprehensible. I first give you the key that will unlock every mystery that now hides from you the secret of my being. This key, when you once know how to use it, will open the door to all wisdom and all power in heaven and earth. Yea, it will open the door to the kingdom of heaven, and then you have but to enter in to become consciously one with me. The key is, to think is to create, or, as you think in your heart, so it is with you. Stop and meditate on this, that it may get firmly fixed in your mind. A thinker is a creator. A thinker lives in a world of his own conscious creation. When you once know how to think, you can create at will anything you wish, whether it be a new personality, a new environment, or a new world. Let us see if you cannot grasp some of the truths hidden and controlled by this key. You have been shown how all consciousness is one, and how it is all my consciousness, and yet is also yours, and likewise that of the animal, the plant, the stone, and the invisible cell. You have seen how this consciousness is controlled by my will, which causes the invisible cells to unite and form the various organisms for the expression and use of the different centers of intelligence through which I desire to express. But you cannot yet see how you can direct and control the consciousness of the cells of your own body, not to speak of those of other bodies, even if you and I and they are all one in consciousness and intelligence. By paying a special attention to what follows, however, you may now be enabled to see this. Have you ever taken the pains to study out what is consciousness? How it seems to be an impersonal state of awareness, of waiting to serve or to be directed or used by some power latent in and intimately related to itself. How man seems to be merely the highest type of organism containing this consciousness, which as directed and used by this power within itself. That this power latent in man's consciousness and in all consciousness is nothing but will, my will. For you know that all power is but the manifestation of my will. 
Now you have been told that in the beginning I created man in my image and likeness, after which I breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul. By creating man in my image and likeness, I created an organism capable of expressing all of my consciousness and all of my will, which means likewise all of my power, my intelligence and my love. I therefore made it perfect in the beginning, patterning it after my own perfection. When I breathed into man's organism my breath, it became alive with me, for then it was I breathed into it my will, not from without, but from within, from the kingdom of heaven within, where always I am. Ever afterward, I breathed and lived and had my being within man, for I created him in my image and likeness only for that purpose. The proof of this is man does not and cannot breathe of himself. Something far greater than his conscious natural self lives in his body and breathes through his lungs. A mighty power within his body thus uses the lungs even as it uses the heart to force the blood containing the life it drew through the lungs to every cell of the body, as it uses the stomach and other organs to digest and assimilate food to make blood, tissue, hair and bone, as it uses the brain, the tongue, the hands and feet to think and say and do everything that man does. This power is my will to be and live in man. Therefore, whatever man is, I am. And whatever man does, or you do, I do. And whatever you say or think, it is I who say or think it through your organism. You were also told that when man was thus possessed of my breath, he was given dominion over all the kingdoms of the earth, which means he was made lord of the earth, the sea, the air and the ethers. And all beings living in all these kingdoms paid him homage and were subject to his will. This naturally was so, for I, within man's consciousness and within all consciousness, am always manifesting my will, and I, the Lord and ruler of man's organism, am likewise the Lord and ruler of all organisms in which consciousness dwells. As all consciousness is my consciousness, and it dwells wherever there is life, and as there is no substance in which there is not life, then my consciousness must be in everything, in earth, water, air and fire, and therefore must fill all space. In fact it is space, or that which man calls space. Then my will, being the power latent in all consciousness, must reach everywhere. Therefore man's will, which is but a focalization of my will, must likewise reach everywhere. Hence the consciousness of all organisms, including his own, is subject to man's direction and control. All it needs is for him consciously to realize this, realize that I, the impersonal self within him, am constantly directing controlling and using the consciousness of all organisms every moment of every day of his life. I am doing this by and through his thinking. I am doing this with and through man's organism. Man thinks he thinks, but it is I, the real I of him, who think through his organism. Through this thinking and his spoken word, 
I accomplish all that man does and make man and his world all that they are. It makes no difference if man and his world are not what he supposes they are. They are just what I created them to be for my purpose. But if I do all the thinking, man does not and cannot think, I hear you say. Yes, here seems a mystery, but it will be revealed to you if you note carefully what follows. For I am going to teach you, man, how to think.